All right, guys, welcome to the next installment of the Easy Wi-Fi broadcast video series. Today we're going to be talking about powering slash wiring up your, um, well, the whole setup pretty much. Now, there's a few things you have to pay attention to, and if you don't, it causes a lot of problems, or at least a lot of the problems are caused by a few of these common things. Uh, not enough power is a big one. So this is a 3 amp, 5 volt uh, beck. Everything runs on 5 volts, so just make sure you don't accidentally use a 12 volt beck. Um, yeah, you should be using a beck instead of, well, I don't know, a USB power bank or something. You can, like traditionally, you can power Raspberry Pis through the micro SD or the uh, micro USB slot. But if you're using it for easy Wi-Fi broadcast, you should really be using a separate BEC with at least 3 amps. And another thing you want to avoid is powering the card over the, uh, the Wi-Fi card over USB. Because connection, USB connections can be shaky. They're usually solid, but I mean, if you're bouncing around a field or you're flying a multi-copter with lots of vibrations or whatever, there can be momentary uh, disconnections or whatever. And connectors just add another fail point. So pretty much the two main important things we're going to be doing today is hardwiring everything in. We'll be soldering it. Uh, I'll show you where. So that will completely eliminate the USB connectors uh, entirely from the system. And another important thing is getting enough power, like I previously mentioned. So one part of the equation is getting a strong enough back with at least three amps, but you also have to be using big enough wires to carry that current. And you want to keep the wires short, ideally. So, so yeah, the wires that the BEC came with are 24 gauge. We're going to be using... I, I do have them soldered up just for connection testing purposes, but I think we're going to be using bigger wires. Uh, and then for the card, we'll definitely be using bigger wires, maybe up to 20 gauge, uh, because I think it'll draw a lot of power with its high power output. So... First things first, this is just a standard uh, back, uh, super common ones. I think they're D-Sun. I'll put a link. Oh, yeah, they are D-Sun. Put a link in the description. I think this should be good enough. Uh, we'll find out together. Uh, another thing you'll notice, if you have a Raspberry Pi, there's all these solder points on the bottom. I think they're originally for testing, maybe. But we're going to be capitalizing on that to direct solder so first things first for power i have pp4 is where i soldered the negative 5 volts and this connection up here right by this resistor is pp1 so i think there's more places you can do but pp1 for positive 5 volts and pp4 for ground of the five volts will definitely work. Uh, that's how I have mine soldered. I plug it in, it works. So that's the direct power connections for the Raspberry Pi. And you can see actually on this back, it's got two spots for output. So we'll be using the second pair of wires to directly connect to the Wi Fi card, which we'll, we'll be doing later. Because uh, right now, I'm not sure the connections, so we'll figure that out together later on. Just wanted to mention a few more things about the Raspberry Pi first. If you cut a USB wire, it has four wires inside. There is a, a red and a black for positive, negative, five volts. And then there's a blue, or a, sorry, a green and a white, which is what actually carries the data. Green is usually data plus white is usually data negative and you can see here there's well there's four usb ports and then they solder like the connectors solder in here so these points well the solder points down here or the test points sorry 
down here are what we're going to be using to hardwire in the Wi-Fi card to the Raspberry Pi. So I think we're going to use uh, we're going to use PP42, which is right down here for data negative, and PP43, which is just one above, for data positive. So we'll have to be doing that after we get the power sorted out so that the signal from the video card or sorry from the camera i guess gets to the video card transmitted out so we'll just tuck that piece of knowledge away for now um next this is a ubiquity wi-fi station i have a couple videos on previous it's well right now it just came with a USB uh, A, I believe this is. Plugs in and it provides data and power. So we're going to be trying to bypass that. Hardwiring everything is the best way to go. I'm not sure. Well, you can see here there's four solder points. So this would be where your four connections wires could go. But I'm curious to see what these four down here is. There's one square, which generally means positive voltage, I think. So I'm guessing it's like positive, data plus, data minus, negative. If it is, we can just solder directly here and leave the connector on just because I don't trust myself to take it off with the tools I have. Okay, so I got the wire stripped here. It's still plugged in. Uh, you can see, once I focus... See, there's four wires here. This is what a USB cable looks like inside. It was shielded, which is good, but these are pretty thin wires. So that's one of the main reasons we're going to be using bigger wires, direct soldered in. It's just a better connection. It's more stable. So there's a red and a black and a green and a white. The red and the black will be power. Green and white carries the signals. So I'm just going to use my multimeter to put one end here, I have it on the continuity test, and I'll probe these four points, uh, and whichever ones are connected, that's how you'll know um, where to solder the wires, I guess. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so it looks like I was wrong. None of these four connections go up to the USB. Uh, this might just be for diagnostics or testing from the factory or something, I guess. So, we're going to have to figure out a new plan. Okay, so like I said before, the bottom connections for this plug might end up being just the best way to do it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to take out the plug. I don't have a hotter rework station or anything. So I might just figure out which four of these pins uh, go to what cables using the same method I was going to use for here. And then we might just try and solder the wires directly on here. It won't be the nicest setup, but it should work. Looking from the bottom here, it's going to be hard to show, but the red wire is top left. The black wire is bottom left. Green wire is bottom right, so that should leave white wire as top right. And it does. So now we know which wires should get soldered to where. It simply comes down to soldering the wires the black white wires to the uh, back and then the green wire which is the data plus will get soldered to PP what did we say 43 over here and the white wire will get soldered to PP 42 so I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of that and then I'll come back and show you how it looks all right so here it is all wired up uh, i think it's a bit of a mess but it should ad address 
all the concerns that we talked about before with the thin wires and the connectors. Everything is soldered to the Beck, kind of a blob there, but there, since they're common, it doesn't matter. Everything's soldered to the Beck. And then I did end up just soldering to the back of the pins. It works out all right. It's not the best looking, but so the power gets directly there on the card and the power goes to those two connections, PP4 and PP1 we talked about earlier on the Raspberry Pi. I just used a black and a white wire twisted, uh, I think it's leftover signal cable from an ESC, but uh, that soldered where I talked about before and back here. So there's no connectors to wiggle loose anymore. There's no thin wires to limit your current carrying capacity. I put in, well, here's the old, well, the stock wires off the USB cable. I use 20 gauge wire for the power. The signal uh, doesn't matter as much because it's not carrying any current. It's just carrying signals. So it could have been thinner, but we got rid of this cable. So everything is now hardwired from the back uh, in either. <coughs> so everything's now hardwired from the back to its appropriate place on either card for the power and the signals hardwired in. The cables are thick enough. Uh, that pretty much covers it. You should be ready to go now. I just got to mount this stuff in a container or something. Um, the only other thing. So yeah, in conclusion, I've said it about a hundred times in this video, you want at least 20 gauge wires for your power, hardwired to a quality 3 amp back, hardwired to your Wi-Fi card, hardwired to your Raspberry Pi, uh, and since you got rid of the USB cable, you have to jump your signals over, and it's a good idea to hardwire those. I'll put a list in the description of the points on the Raspberry card, or on the Raspberry Pi, where uh, it's soldered to. For the Wi-Fi card, you're kind of on your own. If you have a Ubiquiti Wi-Fi station, I'll list the kind of pinout on the back here, uh, the back of the USB connector. If you have another card, you might have to just Google around or test it yourself with a snipped cable. Uh, that's pretty much it. Should solve all your problems. Make sure it might be a good idea to do um, continuity checks from the positive to ground to make sure nothing's shorted. I already did that, but you should be ready to go. Everything's hardwired, nothing to wiggle loose.